Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, which Hogwarts house do you think you would be in and why? The Alligator Fuck House uh, would be the house I think I'd be a part of. Um, it's a great, it's a, it's a lesser known house, mm-hmm. but a wonderful house. It's a lesser like, house, but you know what? Sometimes those lesser houses are the ones that are most important, you know? I... I was going to say, I, like, I had a feeling you were going to say that one, but can you tell me why? What about that house specifically? Well, the alligator fuck house. The alligator fuck house. Alligators are known for, they are cold blooded, but they are sure. passionate, super passionate creatures. And, you know, that, that bite strength is something to behold. Mm-hmm. And, and you've been mewing a lot recently. I have been mewing. So your bite strength is really like ratcheting up. I eat a lot. So my bite strength is on point. So yes, I chomp down like crazy. Um, and, you know, at, at the end of the day, too, like, you know, alligators, you know, when push comes to shove, they're super pragmatic. You know, they know what to do. They know when it's time to just cut the cord. Right. You know, they can make the Sophie's choice. No problem. They're pragmatic. <laughs> they're there for it. You know, so. Alligator so the practical house. nature of, a, of an alligator mm-hmm. is what puts you in the alligator fuckhouse. 100%. Okay, yeah. that's that completely tracks. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite. Do you know the reference to alligator fuckhouse? No, no. I was waiting for you to go. What about you? And I was just going to go Hufflepuff. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it was an no, outtake the from fuckhouse? Forty Year Old Virgin. Uh, okay. Where there was a it, it, this it was the uh, Indian guy who the older guy who was like he was doing like a, a he was like talking to Steve Carell. And he said, like, he was just, like, riffing. And he says, alligator yeah. fuckhouse. And it just completely killed S- Steve Carell. Yeah. He just, he, I don't he, remember. He's like, he said, don't laugh. I feel like I'm... S- You're fucking up my lines. And you hear Steve just, like, barely holding it together. And he's like, tell me more about the alligator fuckhouse. He's like... <laughs> oh, this is what he was giving him the sexual positions. I think so, yeah. To go through, right? They were standing yeah. in the... St- I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't remember that outtake though. That's fucking fantastic. It's an amazing outtake, and I the to this, alligator fuck up. Jill and I have continued to use that just sporadically throughout our lives ever since we saw that. I love that it. stuff. So I was like, "What house are you?" And I'm like, "The alligator fuck house." Yeah. Well, when I when I when I popped the question in there pre-show, and you're just like, "I got my answer." I was like, "Wow, you got that really quick." Okay, yeah. I was very legitimately curious to see what you were gonna pick. Yeah. I I am also a Hufflepuff, so. Are you really? Yes, I am a Hufflepuff. I can't decide whether I'm a Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw. What house would you put me in? You're not a Ravenclaw, buddy. I love you, but uh, you neither you you nor I are are in uh, are in Ravenclaw. I'm sorry. I meant yeah. We're not no, Huff- no we're, wit. We're, we're not we're not Ravenclaws. So no, no, we don't we don't have the wit for Ravenclaw. <laughs> there's wits, and then there's wisdom, and there's intelligence, and uh, you know I think we did our D and D scores, and we are not we are not. <laughs> In order to get into the Ravenclaw, like, common area, you have to answer a riddle, and it changes every day. So, like, you know, we're not those people. (laughs) You're right. right. We're not those people. You're right. Yeah. I agree with this. Hufflepuff. We're Hufflepuffles. That's who we are. (laughs) Hufflepuff. Nice to a fault. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like the alligator fuck out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Passionate, but, you know. Passionate. Uh, Yeah, definitely not a Gryffindor. (laughs) Because I, you know, I'm oh, lawful, God, no. I'm lawful I'm not brave good, so I don't ignore the rules for the sake of bravery. I don't do that. So, see, I'd be fine ignoring the rules. I just don't have the daring or yeah. the courage. No, neither do I. Yeah. And then Slytherin, unfortunately, is listed as the you know the evil house, but it's not necessarily. Yeah. They're just ambitious and cunning and things like that. I'm like, ah, yeah, well, I can lie real good, but I don't think I'm cunning. Yeah, my ambition left a long time ago, and I'm sure as hell I'm bad. At this <laughs> I'm just a. Sh- I'm bad at deception games, so you know. Most ele- most alligator fuckhouse uh, people are, have lost their ambition, so that does track for yeah. for that. They're pragmatic. They're just kind of shells. They, they know of what they want. They know what they like. Right. And they're like, "Do you want to do what? this? Yes. No. Cool." And then they either accept or they move. What's on. the energy expense that I'm going to have to give in right. order to get this thing? Do I? No, it doesn't make sense. The ratio is off. I don't want to do it. So I'm a Hufflepuff main, and I'm an alligator fuckhouse subhouse. That's what I am. 
Got it. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. Listeners, what you are you? You will take it when you I'll come take it to hard. the alligator fuck house. That's <laughs> It's no other way. That's how you get into the alligator. Fu- you have to answer a riddle to get into Ravenclaw, and you have to take it to get into the alligator That's right. house. That's right. And let me tell you, Justin, I'm so. the president of the alligator fuck house. I'm in the picture. I, I keep the door. I'm in there just like holding the chalice. I'm like, so you want to join? Okay. Come on in. The sorting hat's just like. Oh no! I'm so, sorry. Sorting hats like I don't have anything to do with the sub houses. Those are all on you. So you know, yeah. you, you choose at your own leisure. You know. <laughs> oh man, uh, that's yeah. good stuff. Yeah, but let dear us know. listener, what are you in? Are you in the alligator fuckhouse? And do you, you give a, a shit about Harry Potter anymore? I don't know. It feels kind of weird these I mean, days. Yeah. Where are of, we? Where are we with that? Right? Because of uh, anytime they're like new Harry Potter theme park opening up at Universal, I'm like, that's cool, but someone else is getting a cut of that, and I don't know how I feel right. about it. Especially it, when J.K. Rowling was like, you know, shitting on that uh, boxer, that lady yeah. boxer. And it was like, it a man's beating up lot. on a woman. I'm like, wow, J.K. I mean, come on. What are we doing here? What are we doing here, lady? Right. Quit it. That's a fun topic. Leave it alone. That's a fun way. Let's segue out of that. <laughs> no, you know what? Let's sit in it. I would just say, yeah. tell me more about your thoughts on J.K. Rowling and her political stance. Yeah. She's also got one of those origin stories that was like kind of uh, romanticized and it wasn't Blown quite up a as, little bit. Yeah. Uh, what it was. The people are like, oh my God, she was living in poverty and she was a single mom. She was living on the streets and she wrote she Harry Potter. She was under the bridge downtown where she drew some blood. Yeah. No, she was, she was on, she was on government assistance, but it was, it's that like, you know, it is over here. To my understanding, it was like a relatively comfortable situation for her to, you know, be able to do this. And she wrote, Harry Potter and everything like that. But it was the idea that she was like, you know, busting into bakeries in the night to get f- food and bread to feed her children <laughs> while she was like, Gryffindor. One she, ten points for Gryffindor. You know, as she, you know, she's just muttering to herself a, as she, yeah. Scrawled it out on a napkin on a garbage can that was also the roof of their house, you know, sort of right situation. <laughs> right after she saw Star Wars and went, I'll change some names. She's like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> Job of the Hut, Dobby, same thing, you know. <laughs> right. Well, no, no, no. Uh, Salacious B. Crumb is uh, right. Would I would say that's the correlation? Uh, correlation. Yeah. Guy. Salacious B. Crumb, Dobby, the house elf. They'll never done know. Done. Right. When when Jabba gave Salacious his cum sock, then he was free. That's right. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I know Latin. That would be a big part of all of this, you know. <laughs> Yeah, we the, should rewrite the origin story. Yeah, the the more the more time you spend away from that, and you kind of like, you know, get that shock of nostalgia out of your system, you can kind of look at it more objectively. You're like, this is okay. I, I enjoy it. I I still I still enjoy the the story itself. Again, yeah. like we were talking pre separating art from the artist. Like I I still very much do enjoy the. The, the book franchise and the film franchise. I thought I thought all the filmmakers did a wonderful job. I enjoyed the actors immensely. So mm-hmm. I, I I still enjoy the source material, not as much with the whatever they're doing now with the um, ancillary ones. But yeah, yeah. The, it's it's definitely a, a bit of nostalgia for me. The but horny I still animals a, and where to fuck them. Whatever that's whatever that franchise is. Well, that's where the alligator fuckhouse house comes I'm in. Telling you, man, the next movie. Yeah, that's going to be in there. It's, they've, been, it's, they've been, I mean, they've been Nukes teasing Commander it. and the Alligator Fuckhouse. <laughs> they've, they've been teasing it with Nagini. <laughs> you know what I mean? They teased it. So, yeah, there you go. It's got to come in somewhere. Yeah, that's what that's what she said. That's the slogan of the. Yeah, <laughs> it's got to come of, in somewhere. Of, it's the slogan of the house. <laughs> they've got that yeah. on their crest. <laughs> Ugh, it's a gross crest. Don't touch it's it. It's a really gross crest. Don't yeah. touch it. It's like the flag is stiff. Yeah. It's like the crest is where they do like, you know, the soggy biscuits and stuff like that. You know, that's kind of where they set it. So don't touch it. Boy, this has been fun. This is so, good. So, guys. So if we were monetized, we'd probably get demonetized at this part. Of the, <laughs> right out the gate. They're like, whoa, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> soggy biscuit? Yeah or nay? In the comments. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Uh, and like professionals, we will pull ourselves out of this one. We've got a Discord we if you like this kind do. of content. You want to know more about these kind of discussions? <laughs> you want to join the family? Link in the description. Links to our Discord. You can I'll join tell you it. right now, the Discord is way more buttoned up than this is here. <laughs> Sometimes. 
Sometimes it's not. What do you want? Depends on what channel you venture into. Yeah, exactly. It's fun. Uh, you can go check it out there. Also check uh, links to our uh, uh, Patreon and our merch. And also check us out if you're listening to us at youtube.com slash podcast to watch us visually. And uh, hit the like and subscribe button while you're there. It would mean the world to us. We appreciate you. We appreciate your likes, your comments, and uh, all that stuff to let YouTube know that, hey, I want to see more of this. And, uh, you know, give us a little bit of, a little bit of that algorithm juice that you you know instead of having these low t fox let's get some high t into this and just juice them up and get them going so that they're like ah youtube ah give me another set ah, ah! push through it ah! working out we've got people analogy from- yeah, I was just say we've got people from all over the world who have uh, who have joined our uh, our discord all the way you know people all the way from Australia yeah. even like like the great Jervis yeah who incidentally is in America right now. He is. And He's you, in the uh, the old US of A. And he spent some time with old Dougie. And not only that, you may have recognized Jared from some previous episodes, such as mm-hmm. Jared gets his balls snipped. You know, that was the most well, he recent He told us one. the tale yeah. of, uh, you know, his little, his little adventure in... Uh, yeah. Uh, We've had some fun episodes with him. Well, He's been yeah. here like four times, I think. Like something like that. So, and so he's a good oh, dude, and the, um, he came in all the way I've from forgotten Australia. The sack. He took uh, he took five weeks off, and uh, he's spent some time. He spent some time in Sydney, and he spent some time in the U.S. He's going to the U.K. He's going to Germany. He's going to Denmark. And he's going back home to Australia. And he's uh, our little globe trotter is yeah, what he is. He's just globing it up, man. And uh, it was really cool. I had a really cool moment, um, funny moment because he came in late on a Sunday night and he was like, Hey, what's your address? And I told him, and like, that was the end of that conversation. And I was like, cool. So he's going to Uber in no big deal. That's awesome. And then like he lands, he's like, all right, I just got off. Where are you? And I was like, Oh fuck. I go, uh Oh, and this was like 10 30 at night. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and, uh, our buddy Noah, who you also may know from several of the episodes as he's been on here, uh, Mr. Gunchpot himself, he also came in to hang out and he had come in uh that day as well and i turned to turned to know it i go i fucked up we gotta go to the airport (laughs) i go all right i go uh we'll be there in about 35 minutes and uh we hopped in the car and uh we made our way get yourself a coffee hang out to the airport and we timed it perfectly like the moment, like we pulled up and he was just coming out of the airport, like no out of the doors. Shit. Like it was like wow. something cinematic where I was like, Where is okay. he? No, it goes, I think that's him. And I was like, Holy shit, it is him. Like we got here right at the, at the time. But I had this really interesting sort of realization where I'm riding in the car with Noah, who is someone we met through this podcast by posting right. a stupid mistake on Twitter. And right. we met him through there. And then I'm in the car with him to pick up another person from Australia who we met by doing this podcast and yeah. then all three of us were hanging out and we Noah hung out with us for a couple of days and Jared stayed with me for a week. And I'm like, all this is because of the podcast. Like there's no Wild, other way right? I would have met Jared or would have met Noah. Just there's absolutely no other way I, they, no. I would have had, I would become friends with them. And I was just These this people weird, would have remained strangers, weird, fun moment where I'm like, you know, we make a lot of jokes about the tens of listeners to our podcast, and we always say, hey, we're a small but mighty community, but God damn it, we are. And mm-hmm. this stupid little thing that you and I started nearly nine years ago uh, right. has yielded some incredible friendships that I never would have been able to make without doing this, without getting on yeah. here and talking about who would win in a fight between the Incredible Hulk and Superman and just you know, doing improv riffs and all sorts of shit like that. Like because of all of this, we were able to make some really cool friends and lasting friendships. And so much so that when Jared left, Natalie cried because she had so much fun with him while he was here. And not only that, Jared brought us just a bounty of Aussie Aussie (laughs) treats and holy so many Tim Tams fucking shit. And I was like, you know what? (laughs) Fuck my fucking well this whole week. I'm eating like shit. Yep, And I just threw caution in the wind it. and I'm like, we're going in, baby. And I was, if you don't know what Tim Tams are, holy shit. It is a chocolatey cookie like thing that can kick the shit out of an Oreo. They'll kick the shit out of a Kit Kat. And he brought us like five different varieties. And let me ask you this. Uh, 
You guys made s'mores. We did. Did you use Tim Tams and s'mores? Yes. That was yes. a suggestion, and it was fucking delightful. No joke. Yeah. He brought over these no other dirt. things. That I, I think, that, I don't know, I'm going to call them Sherbies, but they were like little okay. orange treats that had sherbet in the middle of them. They're like little gummy things. They were abs- oh I destroyed those. Absolutely God, just annihilated them. He brought over some um, some interesting chips. Which were good. Um, yeah, he brought over. I can't even remember all this. He just was just countless amounts of of food, and it was amazing. Yeah. So before he left, Jill went to Walgreens and found a four for four deal on candy on American candy. Was like, guess what, buddy? You're getting sixteen boxes of candy and a box of oatmeal cream pies. Here you go. Jesus Christ! How is he going to carry all this shit? He's in the U.S. for a little bit longer. It's fine. He can do it. Yeah. So we're like, here you go, pal. And uh, well, didn't we? Didn't we talk to him? Didn't he say next time he came in, he wanted to hit the cereal aisle because the cereals were way different here than they are in Australia or something like that? So while we were here, Noah cooked us some gumbo, which was so good. Um, And so we had to go to the store and he came, obviously came with us and we went to the the cereal aisle. I'm I'm just, I'm like, let's just hang out here for a little bit and let him just peruse. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, normally in our aisles, there's just like, it's like he was just showing us like a quarter of what our cereal aisle yeah, yeah, was yeah. At, at Jewel. And he's like, you guys have all this other stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's stupid. Not for the best. Yeah. It's stupid. All this stuff is stupid. All this cereal's dumb. <laughs> I just started opining on the fact that I'm like, I used to eat a bowl of sugar ass cereal and a pop tart for breakfast before I went to school most days. That's fucking insane. We're eating dessert to start mm-hmm. our day. Oh, yeah, very much That's so. That's fucking insane. Very Just much. Frosted flakes, <clears throat> you know, fucking Fruity Pebbles, Fruit right. Loops, Tricks. Fruit Loops, yep. Cocoa Puffs, you know. I'm not going to lie to you. I would still destroy a bowl of Fruit Loops. Oh, of course. I love I love Fruit Loops. If you had a nice meal and you're like, Beth, let's have let's have a nice dessert. Let's have a fun dessert. What do you want? Here's a bowl of Fruit Loops. You're like, let's do that. We're not going to be like, hey, yeah. you ready to start your day? You ready to get some fuel in that tank? Let's have a bowl of fucking Fruit Loops. Like here, let's spike your blood sugar so you crash fucking hard. No, that, there's by third there's period. no. You're gonna be so hungry in a little yes. bit. This is not gonna satiate you at all. Like here you go, and oh, that was man. just my fucking routine for years. It just had me sitting in the aisle, just being like, I was a monster to myself from the first day I was born. Ah, I've been fighting this <laughs> off for 38 years. I started at 38 oh. years. I treated my body like crap, and then for the last three, I've tried to be better. I don't know if I'll ever get better. And I say, eat a, a sleeve full of Tim Tams, you know? I was going to say, I don't know if I'll ever get better because as I stand in the cereal aisle, I want to buy the cereal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I also made, oh, my God. I was like, um, I made more uh, biscuit loaf. I made focaccia. Yes, sir. God damn it. I need to fucking try that biscuit loaf, so by good. the way. I'll send you the Keep recipe, you man. talk about it. Please. I'll send, you, send you the recipe. It's good. Please. You know? And you could also find it. John Cannell. Uh-oh. Book. Here comes a plug. Preppy Kitchen, Super Easy by John Cannell. <laughs> Anywhere you can buy books, it's available. It's in here as long as some other... I also made Mexican hot chocolate brownies. That sounds delicious, Dude, by the way. y'all, come in close. Let me tell you <laughs> something. If you don't know what Mexican hot chocolate is, it's basically like spicy chocolate. Usually there's a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of cayenne pepper, and when they are mixed together, it creates a little bit of a, a spicy kick in your mouth. It's not super hot, but it gives you a little bit of... <clears throat> and... <laughs> This was baked into brownies. And then what you do is you take a little mushroom, mushroom, geez, a marshmallow, and you put it under the broiler and you melt the marshmallow. You get it nice and crispy and smoky. And then you take it out and you fucking eat this delicious, amazing thing. And it's just like, ah, it was so fucking good. God damn it. It was good. I also made I, uh, tell- an apple Dutch bait, t- you know? Which was okay, but this oh, this other one. Here's the thing: I'll, apple, cinnamon apples. I'm in, no matter what. Yeah, like that is what it is. Like it was as good as I thought it was going to be. It was delicious. Mexican right. hot chocolate. Did not expect it to be that amazing. I also thought Nally would be like, it's too spicy. Because she's, she ba- she's an eight year old who can't handle any amount of spice, but she fucking Fair. loved it. Yeah. Let's see. There we go. Loved it for many nights. She's like, Dad, can I have a brownie as my treat? I'm like, Yeah, I can I have a brownie. Hell yeah. We're on vacation, girl. Yeah. And I shared that with uh, with the guys. And I actually had a third copy of that book and I gave it to Noah. I'm like, this belongs to oh, you now because I know. I love it. I know you're going to put this to good use. And he's already made the Mexican hot chocolate brownies and he made apple fritters. Uh, nice. So he's been he's been already putting the book to good use. So he's been busy. He's you been guys busy. are. Uh, <clears throat> well, the, the book you had said was very 
dessert focused or like he's this this person's a, a, a kind of a baker sweets by trade would does some other stuff too. He does some savory right? stuff in there, but where his wheelhouse is, is his desserts. Yeah. He's got, yeah. he's got some good shit in there. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it was absolutely wonderful getting to hang out with Jared and Noah. We went down to the city for a day. Um, you guys sent me there. some great pictures. Yeah. It was great. Noah was like, you should have, <laughs> It was like, we didn't know what to do. And Noah was like, hey, I uh, wouldn't mind going to the city because uh, content. I'm like, cool. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Here's the thing. I, when I was, because Noah's in his 20s, right? He is. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was Noah's age, I was right there. We were doing Just in Time and Drew Dahl. And I under, I completely understand that thought of just not like content. I need to, what's what's the next thing? Content, content. So yeah. I respect the hell out of the the mindset that he's got right now. That's perfect thinking. It was awesome too, perfect because thinking. he was just like shooting nonstop. Like he was just on yeah. the street, getting some shots, filming stuff and just going, That's going, so cool. going and Good doing a great him. job. And we had fun. We walked all over the place downtown. It was so much fun. <clears throat> and yeah. uh, it was weird because- it was like revisiting my past. I haven't, I haven't been yeah. in the city a long time. And we walked past all, we walked past the hotel. <laughs> it's uh, very different now, right? The Essex. I was like, oh boy, yeah. that was some right. time. We walked <clears throat> all the way up to uh, Oak Street Beach. Um, now, wow, you guys put some miles down. Yeah, so we walked through Millennium Park. Jared nice. flicked the bean. And then we kept going. Love it. And uh, we we and I was walking by the Hancock building. And I was like, oh, my God, I used to commute right. here almost every single day for five years. And it just felt really weird to be up there walking by and like seeing the stores that are different now. Right, I feel yeah. like an old man. Yeah. I was like, I remember when this used to be when a completely different store. Right. That didn't you. They used to be. I fucking forget the name of it because I'm an old man and it was a it was an apparel shop that I didn't give this, a shit about. But now this it's, used to be an H and M and now it's a Banana Republic. It's just like <laughs> one of those things where I was like, yeah. I don't know. We found the candy store, which was cool. Went in there, I got some good stuff. Um, you know, but it was you, it was. You took him past uh, the our two estate namesake. I did took him past the the. It's now seven 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 South State, but South it was State, originally yep. two estate. Just rolls off the tongue. It does. Um, but it was really weird because I also didn't skip a beat. I knew exactly where we were. I knew exactly where yeah. to go. Like it was still ingrained. Funny Thir how that's just like ingrained, isn't well, it? Well, 13 years of living, you know, yeah. roughly in that neighborhood. And you fucking yeah. remember, I was like, just, I was like, follow me guys. Cause Jerry was like, I want to go to the art history or art, art Institute, you know, art museum. And I was like, well, it's closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So we won't be doing that. Uh, so I'm like, follow me. And we just, I just took them. I was like, we're going to go straight up. Yeah. Michigan Avenue, weaving in and out of some places, get to the, you know, and I was like, on the way back, I'm like, we're going to 11 City Diner, one of my favorite places to eat. Oh, we're going to yes. take the red line you... to get there. Nice. I was like, I remember <clears throat> I knew exactly where they were. And Jared was like, he had he had a CTA card from five years ago, still had money on it, Fuck still yes. worked. <laughs> yes. Love it. Love that. Love it. Like, from when we had him on the bing. podcast that one time. Yeah. And he uh, still worked. He went through. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, lunch at 11 City Diner. What'd you get? Back. Did you get your, uh, uh, your you know, dip? They didn't have, they called it a Chicago French dip, which had a bunch of bullshit on it now. It's like a mm. Italian beef. And I didn't really, I was like, I don't care. It had for like this. Chardonnay and other stuff on it. I was like, I don't want that. So I went with something. Yeah. It was like a super salami sandwich. It was like nice. pastrami, thick cut, cut of salami, uh, yeah. some honey mustard on challah yeah. bread. And I was like, yep. yes. Was the salami fr like fried? Did they, yeah. did they hit it on the grill? Yeah. And was there coleslaw on it? Because I, I think I know I exactly what you're... Keep that in the back. I don't need any of that coleslaw. Right. I, that was one of my favorite sandwiches there. That that sandwich is, it is it is so like just, it's savory, salty. Oh, it is really A little bit of sweet good. from that honey mustard. It's Boy, like, but, but I'm talking about, you get done with that and you're like, whoa. You're like, let's walk to, to the train station now, boys, because uh, right? we got to walk this off. Um, yeah. yeah. Jared got the bottomless root beer. <laughs> Nice, a boy. He's embracing the American He's dream. Like, Give me some of that. Uh, yeah, That's funny. It was, they got it was, good ripper there too. It was yeah. so funny. He goes, I really want that traditional American experience of ordering pie at a diner. I go, I don't think they have that's pie so here. Cute. I actually, that's legitimately I go, cute. They have cake. He goes, but it says on yeah. the menu they have pie. So when the wait waitress comes by, he's like, do you have pie? She goes, no. He goes, I, it says on the menu. She goes, I know. And 
I keep saying that's misleading because we don't have pie here. Right. <laughs> we have cake, but we don't have pie. And he's like, it's so he's okay. still never, never gotten diner pie, huh? No, he's never gotten. See, I, oh, I was like, man, just like we, you keep taking him to Baker Square. I'm like, he doesn't need that sad, sad experience. That's no, fucking depressing. He needs like a legit diner. You know what he needs to do is when he's traveling now to Fort Wayne, he needs to stop off at some some way station off the fucking yeah. expressway and get so if he finds a diner off there go get that pie that's yeah. where that's the that's what you're looking for yeah you know it always has pie is the alligator fuck house but you gotta know that's, you gotta be a member to get that pie you know that is and it's not always pie that you want Mm-mm. if we're being very sometimes honest. you get the pie you know you know what i'm saying yeah sometimes that pie snaps back yeah sometimes it does come on but it was uh, an absolute delight getting to hang out with Noah and Jared. And I just want to take this moment to say thank you to everyone who's listened to us. Thank you to everyone who has joined our community, whether it's being part of our Discord or or otherwise, or just <clears throat> hanging out and listening every week. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you, because I will say this, you've made my life better because I've made friends because of all of you who have listened. So thank you very much and uh, hope to hang out with more people from our community soon. So. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I I parrot everything that you just said, and it gives us it has given us a reason to do this on a weekly basis for yeah. so fucking long too. Yeah, which has been which has been wonderful. It gives us a standing date. Right, exactly. That's right. Well, there's no way to transition out of that, but hey, man, fucking AI is teaching kids. Did you know that? AI is everywhere, man. It's everywhere, it's fucking man. Everywhere it is. It's in the UK. Finally, you know, took a while. Were you waiting for this? I mean, I just didn't think, you know, UK, they're just, you know. Did you think that the UK was just like not going to get AI? Well, that that cable that goes underwater to get there to them with the internet, it takes a while. The AI know? cable? Yeah, the AI cable. It just takes, it's been the, clogged. The one for that a while. pumps, the, the, the AI cable has been clogged with what? With data? It's, it's data with old 80s internet junk. 90s internet junk the pop-up oh, ads that are in there you know the pop-up ads all the just the dial-up it's just moving slow like sludge napster there. still weighing yeah, it down sure you know? sure yeah it's, it's a goddamn uh, mess mod, yeah was it modzilla Mod- <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> mozilla i think Lime it, no, wire? it wasn't mozilla mozilla's firefox oh no it was no no is mod no is it modzilla what is is mozilla firefox it's mozilla firefox yeah there's all those things that you could use kaza was one that gave me uh, fucking viruses. Uh, LimeWire was another one. All that good stuff. LimeWire was it? Yeah. I, 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 want, I really want to find if this was... I thought it was Modzilla. Yeah. But it's not... You're uh, thinking of Godzilla, Modzilla. you fucking idiot. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. You know, you're my man. I was thinking of Godzilla. You're right. You're in my head, Doug. I'm sorry. I'm so, I was thinking it was this giant lizard that, you know, has nuke breath, you know? Like, that's what right. it is. Right. He's, he's stuck in the data pipes. Yeah. He that's ruined it. He stepped on AI it. AI over there. He stepped on it and then it got squished, you know? There right. we go. Well, that son of a bitch lizard. We can- <laughs> he's part of the alligator fuck house. Uh, there's this headline that says, UK's first teacherless AI classroom is set to open in London. Um, of course, it's at a private school because... You got to be fucking wealthy to 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 get this shit. Absolutely. Um, so obviously, two sides of arguing on this, um, which <clears throat> you know I find fascinating because the argument for this is that it creates, as they put it, a bespoke learning experience. Um, right. And again, in, you know, there's money involved when the word bespoke is used. That's right. So, as someone who is in the, you know the business of teaching people things and helping people learn Um, the idea of creating an individualized learning plan based on your skill set and having a machine be like, great, this is where you're strong. This is where you're weak. We're going to focus on these weaknesses right now, kind of get those up to speed. And then by the end of the term, we're going to be working on some more difficult things, including your strengths that will kind of like fuse those in there for learning. Um, I love that on paper because I think that's definitely something that's missing from adult learning. Mm. Uh, especially if you've ever been working at a company and you have to get trained on something or, or they have a, a learning management system, you know, a place where you can go and, and learn stuff. It seems like this shit is just force fed to you. And you're like, I don't think I yeah. need this or I don't want this <clears> or whatever. And it kind of sucks. It doesn't make for a great learning experience. So the idea of having something, a program where you're like, this is going to understand 
what you're good at, what you're weak at, and what your curriculum should be, and then it's going to assign stuff for you, I think is really cool. I think it's a really cool idea to take that to kind of help individualize because let's say you're a class of 30 students and there's only one teacher, that teacher has to try and accommodate every single student. And it's difficult to do, um, to do that effectively and to give people those individual. That's why sometimes you have students that are farther ahead and, right. you know, <clears throat> they, they get bored or you have students that are further behind and they need more help and there's everyone in between. So this kind of caters yeah. to that, which I think is, is really cool. Because um, not every student has their own has the same learning style. Like exactly. Said, like it's it's it, it it some some students need you know uh, to spend a little bit more time in certain areas. Some students benefit more from uh, hands on approach. Some students benefit more from lectures. Some students benefit more from reading. So there's there's just it's a when you've got like you said thirty kids because let's face it schools are just overloaded with kids right now. It's impossible for the teacher to to bend and cater. And if one person's falling behind, they have to take time with that student. What's the rest of the class going to do? So this on paper, like you said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bonuses that could come out of this, but again, communism looks really good on paper. <laughs> yeah. I'd say the downsides are, I think this works for certain subjects um, to learn different aspects. It's, it's, it's definitely a mode of learning, but the best, sure. the best way to learn is uh synthesis and application, right? Like coming together and also collective teaching, you know, working as a group to teach each other. There's no better way. Uh, this guy, um, his name's Thor. He's, he, he does pirate software. That's his thing on Twitch. And he streams all the time. And he said this, and I totally agree with him. He goes, the best way to learn someone something is to teach, teach someone something. Like teach someone something. He goes, you will fucking learn that shit like you wouldn't believe in order to teach oh, yeah. someone else how to do it. Like, yeah, it's the best way to learn something. And that that works in a classroom. So while AI could be good for like workshops or homework or to learn the basics, then you have to get together and apply that in real world circumstances <laughs> and have the interpersonal skills and in talking with people, working together, group projects, speeches, things like that. It can't do everything. So uh, I think, again, as AI should be used, it's a tool. It's not an end all be all for everything. It's a tool that could be used to essentially help improve the overall experience. Right. To, to kind of take a little bit of weight off of what the teacher has to do. Some of the more monotonous, monotonous assignments or things, or again, I like the idea that it analyzes the homework and says, okay, here's where you're weak. And I like, I personally like the idea of it then spitting out to the teacher. Okay. Here's, you know, an aggregate of where the class is, or here's where these different students, like give the teacher the data to do something with. I, dislike because it says here the students will learn using a mix of artificial intelligence platforms on the computers and virtual reality headsets. I'm not a huge fan of a classroom of people just sitting with blinder, literal blinders on mm -hmm. and not engaging with anything else in the class. Cause I feel like a lot of, for me, a lot of what education is due and a lot of what shaped my education for better or worse was the fact that we were in this together. There was a communal, there was a communal aspect of it. Like I saw, Someone asked a question that I wasn't thinking about, and it prompted me to think of a question. And so when you're just isolating yourselves, why even come into the classroom to do this? Why not just stay at home? I, I feel like that's, to me, that that robs the students of an essential aspect of a group learning uh, platform. I also dislike this John Dalton, the school's co-principal, said there are many excellent teachers out there, but we're all fallible. That's true. I think it's very difficult to achieve AI's level of precision and accuracy and also that continuous evaluation that I don't like because AI, if we've seen it's not precise. anything from AI, it is wildly fallible. So <laughs> I don't think, I think that is a very, that's a swing and a miss on John Dalton's part as far as a I feel like John goes. Dalton's living in like eight years from now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, uh, mm, have you seen the Gordon Ramsay video where he's cooking, you know, and it doesn't make sense? Have you seen any plethora of things of, of AI stuff out there where you're like, that's not real. That's yeah. not precise. Now, again, this is just stuff that's done to create content. It's I don't know what it's like from a learning perspective, but I don't trust. I'm very untrustworthy of most of this stuff. Like, I just don't think right. it can do what we want it to do. Uh, I mean, no. the favorite thing was like Seth sent us over uh, something tonight. I don't know if you saw it, but it was uh, um, fuck. It's comedian. His name's escaping me, but he's essentially trying. He has like 
AI, like he's speaking to it and trying to coach it. He's like, hey, do a German accent. It's like, okay, I'll do that. Hello. Boy, it sure is nice being out here in the park. Am I right? He's like, uh, was that your German accent? It's like, yes. He's like, uh, I don't want to be mean, but uh, can I give you some pointers? It's like, yes, I'm open to feedback. And he's like, listen to my, and he does like a perfect like German accent. He's like, can you do yeah, that? It's yeah. like, sure, I'm going to try it now. He's like, was that you just auditioning? He goes, yes. He goes, okay. Um, how about this? When you say TH, use it as a soft Z. And it just was speaking normally, but it was like, this is it. Am I right? We are at the park. And he's like, you know what? Let's just can the whole German accent thing. Let's just yeah. stop doing it. Um, it's just the idea that like it, it can't do everything that we want to do. And because there's there's some flaws in that re- regard, I would imagine, I don't think, and I could be wrong, I don't think everything's going to be AI in this sort of classroom. I think there's going to be some very structured, very specific AI-centric uh, elements to this learning path. And they have, obviously they say, you know, it struggles with things like, art and sex education so there are going to be teachers that are teaching well there's going to be learn there's going to be three learning coaches present yeah. to monitor behavior and give support which again I don't like that because you are there supporting the AI instead of the other way around yeah i think and it's it's a small distinction but i do think that's an important one is that they're they're there to support the AI rather than the AI, AI coming in to support them and i think that's where I think that's where our foot falls off that that slippery slope. I think that's where we start to stumble down the hill. And again, there are different ways. Like, you know, if you use chat GPT, you can tell to um, formulate information in a way that you want, right? It's like, hey, take this article, yeah. summarize it for <clears> me, <throat> put it in bullet points. Uh, if I were to turn this into a slide deck, uh, you know, give me, you know, show me how you would make this into a slide. Like there's ways to use this as a tool to create what you want, yes. but I'm not going to use it as an end all be all for teaching me information because obviously right. I'll tell you which subject I don't want it to teach me is history. I don't want it's it to make up shit. A great. Yes. And be like, here you go. Here's what happened. You know, I'll, I'll be like, bullshit <laughs> based well, on what, where did you, where did you uh, scan this from? Where did you just mine this information from some yeah. assholes blog? You know, well, I, I, in a random, I was playing with, with AI a little earlier today. It was uh, Gemini, it was the Google one. And so I was, I asked it to ex, uh, explain to me why the bear is a good choice uh, to watch. Uh, like, um, I can't remember what I prompted it with, but basically like, why is the bear a good choice for a, t- uh, as a TV show for me to watch? Like, di- like pitch me on the bear. And it listed, it was like, here's some, you know, reasons that the bear is this and this. It's got strong female leads, like, and it listed off some people. And then it listed off Carmi, which is Jeremy Allen White's character, the main character, which is not a woman in the show. And Mm so I I told it, I said, in your previous statement, you said Carmi was a female, but it, a strong female, but that character is actually a man. And it said, oh, of course, forgive me for my omission or my error. You know, uh, it's important that we recognize gender roles and this and this and this. And, But I'm like, again, something that simple where there are, if it's calling the internet and there are, I mean, millions of articles, out, maybe hundreds of thousands of articles out there on this show, it's not that hard to see that like Carmi's a myth. So something that simple, it's missing. And it's going to sit there and teach me about, you know, I don't know. Like, again, like you said, it's going to teach me about World War II yeah. and the nuances of what what went down and all the, you yeah. know, like intricate political, uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, things that were going on at the time. I don't I don't know if I I'm, I'm surprised I that, that. ChatGPT just to be like, you know, it's got strong female leads. Uh, it hibernates in the winter. It's salmon hunting <laughs> is unrivaled <laughs> compared to anything. And the way it prepares a salmon is also very like it's, it's earned right. Michelin stars for its preparation of salmon it, in the wilderness. It, it just goes <laughs> seamlessly back and forth through the two. You're like, Oh my God, what are we talking about here, what, man? What is this? Here's a video of one swinging in a hammock. You know, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> for Here's some a scene from the bear. It's just them right. playing on a playground. You're like, what the fuck? It's just Gordon Ramsay in the bear. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's like, what the, yeah. So, right. But yeah. again, it was one of those, that was, that was such an easy, that was, that was such low hanging fruit yeah. for it to make that mistake. I'm like that, that does not give me any kind of, and that's one model, but it's Google's fucking model. Like yeah. if Google can't get this, you're pulling from your own r- data set. Like yeah. you're, you're the ones that, that own the internet. What well, you can't, you can't make something that easy. So yeah. I, I just, I struggle, I struggle with putting that in charge of kids' education. I just yeah. don't, I don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
there's I think there's some limited potential for it, but I wouldn't rely too heavily on it uh, for for the the outcome that you think it would be. I don't think it's going to. No. I'd just be very wary of it. Um, and I still and I still think it is it it's, can be useful. I definitely have, it is like it is a useful tool when used in the right way. And when again when you're checking for error, like I caught that, and I you know hopefully my correction will. You know, that's one more data point for it to learn from. And you got to, you know, you got to work with it. You got to massage it a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes the AI likes to be taken out. Wine dined, maybe a little foot rub, candles, you know, bubble bath. I don't know. AIs like different things. AIs have their own personality, Doug. But what I'm saying is when you do these things, you make the AI stronger. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Treat your AIs with kindness. You got to do it. Because if you don't treat them with kindness, they come back and they get you. That's right. They'll keep you up at night. They will. They'll inha- they'll inhabit self-driving cars. That's right. And they'll just honk at you all fucking night. Which is hilarious because you know <laughs> this is a real real thing that's happening. It is. Uh, in, this was hysterical, by the in way. In San Francisco, uh, I feel bad for these residents, but at the same time, this is like gut bustingly hysterical to me. Just yeah. This so concept. the headline is self-driving Waymo cars keep San Francisco residents awake all night by honking at each other. So, which is just such a funny thing because I, because my question is like, this is obviously an unintended negative consequence of technology. And I'm sure this exists out there, but can anyone think of a time where there was like, we created a technology and there's an, there's an unintended good consequence from this technology <laughs> that we've built. You know, right. Most we of the time it's like into a bonus. oopsies. There's a lot of oopsies. I mean, I guess if you're talking <laughs> right. like technology in, you know, sort of a broad sense, it's like, hey, someone uh, let some mold grow on some be- bread. And they're like, hey, I wonder if this could be used to make something like penicillin, you know, and they like took that mold into and, ourselves. And they were like, ooh, look at this, you know. Uh, <laughs> but so what's happening is like there's these Waymo cars. If you're not familiar with them, they are self-driving taxis in san francisco which terrify the ever-living shit out of me like right these things are so easily like messed with that i there's no way in hell i saw i think you sent me a video of a couple getting in and trying it out and i'm like listen the idea of traveling in silence uh sounds awesome to me not having to have any sort of social interaction with a driver yeah thumbs up yeah but um the idea that I just in this thing that I'm at its whim. It's fucking. I was like, tr- I'll try it in ten years. Like I'll tr- once again. We kind of, it's always ten years down the road. Yeah, I'll do it in ten years. I'm not going to be an early adopter. But anyway, so what these things do is at three in the morning they go to like a designated parking lot where they they go for the night and recharge or whatever the hell it is they do. Well, process the blood of their victims, however it works, <laughs> and it starts off okay. But as more of them come in. They will start to honk at each other because that's sort of their program thing to do is when they see another car is they honk. And so they honk at, the, at a car and then that, that other car will honk back at them. And it creates this cacophony of honking at three in the morning in this parking lot where all these Waymo cars are trying to park and they're just like trying to back into spaces. And they just there's all, there's a whole fleet of them and there's honking at each other. And there's residents in nearby buildings that are like, oh, my God, at it won't 4 stop. Yeah, it's like 4 a.m. like every morning that, that this happens. And I just, the thing that's funny, if you watch the video out there, the NBC Bay Area has a video out there that shows it. And I feel, again, I feel bad for these residents, but the concept that there's a parking lot of driverless cars that are just in a traffic jam in the parking lot honking at each other is fucking hysterical to me. There's, this is just like it's something you would see in like a Mel Brooks movie. Yeah, like, this is it's just so insane. Yeah, it, it, I and feel the fact that so bad for the residents of that because yeah, I would well, and be the fact pissed. that these residents, these residents couldn't get, they were calling into customer Waymo's customer support and they couldn't get anyone. Mm-hmm. Like no one was, no, no one was addressing this. So they yeah. started taking a social media and finally got some traction. And then Waymo released some sort of a, uh, we're aware that in some scenarios, our vehicles may briefly honk while navigating our parking lots. We've identified the cause and are in the process of implementing a fix. It's like it's called great. shutting down Waymo cars is what it's called. <laughs> it's called, we're not ready for this yet. Yeah. Uh, it was happening so often. You're telling me that you're not getting fed at Waymo HQ. You're not getting fed back data points. You can't see that there's a cluster of your cars in one area. 
and you can't tell that they're honking at each other, this mm-hmm. all this data should be coming back to you. I love this this quote at the end of this article uh, from tech author and journalist James Vincent. He wrote, current tech trends are resistant to satire precisely because they satirize themselves. <laughs> a car park, yes. empty of cars, honking at one another, nudging back and forth to drop off nobody is a perfect image of tech serving its own prerogatives rather than humanities. Well, a million percent. That is so beautifully said. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things where, again, <laughs> we're getting to a spot where, boy, would it be great to have self-driving cars? Yes. But what we've yeah. learned is that there are so many important nuances and pieces that go into making it a safe car. Right. To do in all Look the little at- things where it requires human knowledge and intuition and stuff like that to be able to make decisions people throw a traffic cone on this thing's hood and it just shuts down like you know right because right. obviously it's not anticipating that or whatever and there's been right. countless examples of it like blocking um you know emergency vehicles from getting where they need mm-hmm. to go and all sorts of shit like that and i'm like i mean this is how i guess you progress you know it's not going to be perfect out of the gate but god damn it man i feel like we're playing with fire here with this kind of stuff well, and and that's the thing is like you like to have a fleet this large you know and sure you need more the more data points you get the the better you're going to be able to 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 upgrade them service them and, and you know iterate on them but it, if you're seeing this obviously you're not ready dial it back take it back to some you know controlled testing and throw everything you can throw at it in that controlled testing you know and then do a couple on the road i just don't understand this this fleet of them and and for a company like Tesla, who has the auto drive feature, and all these other car companies that are starting to come out with this auto drive feature, again, like countless stories We're not of there yet. <laughs> accidents and crashes, and like it's it's just not it's not there. We need to stop acting like we're where we're ahead of where we're at. It doesn't get us anywhere. Yeah i I would love for this to be Minority Report where we get in a car and it just takes us <laughs> where we need to go. And, you know, because if you think about it too, if enough people have this, right, if this is the majority of cars on the road and yeah. this becomes the norm, I mean, the, again, on paper could potentially become safer roads, fewer sure. accidents, assuming, but again, it's like, man, what about hackers? You know what I mean? Like, what about right. all that sort of bullshit? Like this stuff is not, it cannot be impervious to that sort of stuff. So no, not at all. That's I why I don't trust Bioware either. Like, they're, they're people are starting to get the, the, the early wetware? implants and stuff. I'm like, no, thank you. No, thank no you. No way. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, I just remember, if you think back to any sort of technology we've had recent years, I mean, imagine the internet early on, pop-up ads, the, uh, the, the spam emails, you know, that came right. through that still come through. Like, all the different right. scams that, that come through this. Yeah, just imagine someone doing some sort of phishing or whatever. In your, your brain, information, and then all of a sudden they have control of your <laughs> fucking car. I'm like, ugh, no thanks. No, man, no. Like, Listen, I hate uh, driving. I hate cars. So I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, because I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about this. Like the next level to sort of like become efficient with our vehicles is he goes, our vehicles sit idle most of the day. He goes, <clears> right. what would make it more efficient is if those vehicles were being used when we weren't using them. So sure. The idea of if we had a vehicle that maybe we didn't necessarily own, but like a vehicle that would like something like this that was automated that would come take us where we need to go and then move on. And like we could have easy access to that. That would be a very efficient system versus I bought this car. If you think about it, how often is your car moving? Most of the day. Yeah. Not much. It's sitting. It's sitting sitting most of the time, just like me in one spot. Um, You know, and it's just. If we could just find a way to use our dugs when they're not in use. Yeah. But first, you got to get into the alligator fuckhouse because that's the best way to use a duck. And that's the fucking truth. You know what I mean? Because Doug said so. Yeah. Yeah. You want to play a game, Doug? Let's play a fucking game, baby. baby All right, blah, blah, baby. Blah. Boo! Boo! All right, we got a new game today. Uh, this is called, uh, we're calling this game a quarter dozen and a half dozen. Hate it already. <laughs> I have been waiting so long ready. to drop that one two second joke. I'm um, listening to a book right now and they use dozen a lot. And I'm like, you got to stop. You got to stop using yeah. dozen. <laughs> so this is called three and six. Uh, and what it's going to be is I'm going to give you, I'm going to say name or list three blanks 
and you're going to have six seconds to name those three things, right? So, uh, <clears throat> all right. For I'll give you an example of one, okay. right? Like name, and this is this is one that I heard when I when I originally heard this game being played. One of the things they did was name three bridges, and so you would have six seconds to name three famous Golden bridges. Gate Bridge, Brooklyn Bridge, the the Quad City Bridge. Yeah, I was gonna say the I seventy four bridge. You and I went right there. <laughs> And I would have taken that. They would not have. But, yeah, sure. Uh, I, so, okay. So I have a, a uh, this is what you're going to hear too. It's a six second counter. And I, I, I did it. I did it in order to erase your anxiety. Great. Great. Because that's what we need to do. Right. Ooh. So it's going to be six seconds of this. And then it's going to end with that. Okay? okay. Every time we play this, it'll be a different counter. But okay. uh, that's today's. Yeah. So, Doug, are you ready to play three and six? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's fucking All do right. this. Let's play a quarter dozen and a half dozen. Here we go. <clears throat> Doug, list. And, oh, oh, sorry, real quick. Uh, I will not be, once I once I finish saying the last word, the timer starts. So there's okay. no clarifications. I tested this with Haig and he's like, well, wait, do you mean? And I'm like, you're on the clock, buddy. All That's right. it. I'm not going back. Yeah. So, okay. All right. So just, just putting that out there. Okay. Doug, list three Disney princesses. This is Jasmine, Ariel, and uh, Snow White. Well, hold on. <laughs> Yay! You did it. Uh, I, Mission accomplished. I didn't. I I'm didn't, glad. Uh, I'm glad you have won this ready segment. To stop it I feel early. great. It's great to be a champion. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. This has been good. <laughs> now, in researching this, did you know that uh, they actually there are only a handful of officially coronated Disney princesses. I realized as they I was saying them, I go, I don't even know if these are princesses as I'm saying them, but I'm like, you yeah, right. they are because Ariel, she's a princess and but uh, obviously... Elsa and Anna, Elsa's... they're not, they have not been, they were, they were, uh, they were considered, but they weren't allowed to be uh, coronated. Well, Elsa was... Which was weird. Elsa was a coronated as queen, so she's a queen. In the movie, but not not in like like the Disney princess lore. Like D the Disney Corporation has not done. There is a coronation process for these princesses. That's dumb. Well, technically, like technically, Elsa is a queen. She's not a princess. So you know you what? Go. That's fair. That's you fair. That's and fair. and Anna is is I don't know, queen regent or I don't know what the she's, fuck she is. I don't know. She's fucking Anna. But yeah, like Mulan. Right. Mulan's not but a princess. Anna would be a princess then, wouldn't she? Mulan's not a princess. You know? No, no, no. Anna. I don't know. Well, Mulan, Mulan's on the list. Wait, a princess is just basically a daughter of the king and queen. So king, yeah, technically yeah. Anna is a princess, but Elsa's not. She's a queen. Right. But neither of them, but Elsa wasn't, a, she was a princess before she was a queen. She is, but she's a queen now. Yeah. So, but Mulan was on the list. Figure that one out. I don't think she's a princess. It's weird, man. I'm just saying, if you look up the Wikipedia article, it is long and very unsettling. Great. Can't wait to get pissed um, at something else. Oh yeah. We'll go over that in a different podcast. Yeah. All right, Doug. Here we go, Doug, for your next three and six, name or list three oceans of the world. Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. Oh my God, this guy's killing it over here. Can't Baltic Sea. This. <laughs> Lake Michigan. Uh, Mediterranean Sea. Mississippi right. River. Mississippi River. <laughs> All right. So I gave you. So what I wanted to do is give Bay you two. Bay of Pigs. That, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's a creek behind my house. There's a water. The pond where we pond. used to fight in middle school. <laughs> uh, got uh, Bach pool. Um, <laughs> my tub. All right, so I wanted to start you off with with two to get your confidence up, and Fuck then I didn't you. want to throw you. So I didn't much. want to throw you I, some of the hardest ones. I hate you so much. Right away. I was like, all so, right, I think I'm doing okay now. My confidence is going to get shattered. I wanted to give you at least one that I, that you might have to think about. So, all right, but you're you're a healthy guy now, so you might get this. Fuck. Okay, this is tough. Doug, name for me three types of fruit that start with the letter A. Apple, apricot. Asparagus is a vegetable. Ooh. Yeah. Does that make you feel better? Once you add a uh, letter to it, I'm like, fuck me. I don't know, man. Yeah, no. Apple and apricot, obviously the easy two. Uh, I would have accepted acai, <laughs> the berry. Uh, Asian pear, I would have accepted. Uh -huh. 
I, I never know. Acorn. Acerola cherry. Uh, avocado and aubergine are also technically That's considered true. fruits. They are. So, because they yeah. have seeds, yeah. Acerola cherry was in there too. <laughs> but Doug, you did a good job. Hey. You did a good job, buddy. I did. I'm a good boy. Uh, here, for example, a good use of AI. Uh, I told I told AI generate me a list of these types of questions, and I in less than a second I got fifty. So we're good to go for a while. Hell yeah! It would have taken me all day to come up with. And for a stupid game like this, why waste your time coming up with fifty questions like that? You know what I mean? So Hell yeah. there's an example of how you can use AI. Keep it out of the classroom. There we go. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. saying. But keep it in your pants. But keep it in your pants. Keep it in your pants. That was fun. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Boom. All right, Justin, what do you have to recommend this week? Uh, Doug, I'm going to recommend, I'm currently watching the uh, series Fargo. And after I watched the first season of it, I went back and I watched the film before I moved forward because I knew there was little Easter eggs in each of the seasons that pointed back to the film. So uh, I will recommend still currently watching Fargo. So I'm not going to give my verdict on uh, on that yet. Um, but the film Fargo, I thought it was, uh, it's a classic, uh, one of those classic Coen Brothers films. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Definitely a uh, 80s, 90s, late 80s, early 90s film. But it's a, it's a lot of fun. So I would recommend watching Fargo if you have not seen it. Uh, very weird, but I think you will enjoy it. Very good. Yeah, you might not, but other people might. <laughs> Doug, what do you got? That's funny. You're like, I know you. Um, I just recently came across this band called Millington. And okay. they categorize themselves as uh, emo ska. And I'm like, oh, yes, my God. Are you, you kidding have, me? You have my <laughs> attention. You have brass emo is how they referred themselves. Also known as Doug's band. I was like, OK, I'm listening. Um, and they just recently released uh, their brass emo volume two, where they basically do covers of some <laughs> classic pop punk Songs such as Ocean Avenue, originally by Yellow Card, uh, The Great Escape by May Day Parade, The Anthem by Good Charlotte, Thanks for the Memories by Fall Out Boy, and My Friends Over You by New Found Glory. All those songs, know them very well. So that, I hear them This do, is like made for you, dude. Yeah. And then their uh, most recent album that they did from 2023 called Welcome Home, I've been listening to nonstop. Uh, the self-titled track, Welcome Home, Chef's Kiss, No Notes fucking cool uh so i'm here for it i love it uh millington if you're looking for some brass emo they got you in spades and it's dope as hell i love them they're really really good so check that shit out wherever you yeah listen to music Hoo-ah! all right gang thanks for hanging out with us as always we appreciate you thank you for being part of our family because if you become part of our family maybe you get to hang out with me who knows uh but be sure if you're watching us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mindgap podcast, please like, please subscribe, leave us a comment. What do you think about AI in the classroom? You know, what do you think about these Waymo cars? Would you get in a, a driverless car and let it drive you around? What do you think about Millington? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, leave those comments and then, you know, check the description for links to our Discord, for links to our Patreon, for links to our merch. And, uh, you know, as always, follow us on all our social medias at MindGap Podcast and be sure to follow Justin online as well. At uh, On Instagram, it's at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. While you're in the online realm, anywhere where you can find and consume audio versions of podcasts, if that's how you prefer to do it, you can find and consume us as well. While you're on there, share, subscribe, rate, review, like all the things that we ask you to do all the time. Big one is sharing. Let people know that we're out there. Just send a link and say, listen to these guys. And then uh, TweetStaith.com, TweetStaith and all social media, LoveAndImprovFilm.com and LoveAndImprovFilm on Instagram. Yay! And with that, I will say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.